Hey what's going on YouTube and welcome to this video on how to create a custom ringtone for your Cisco phones and uh, this came about because one of the viewers uh, on this video that I posted almost seven years ago was trying to uh, create their own ringtone uh, or use the CTU ringtone like I used in this example but they were having issues when they tried to play it it sounded garb garbled uh, didn't sound right and uh, so and it's been a while for me, so I uh, I started playing with it, and I actually had some issues too. So just as an example, you can hear this ringtone. Tone in my case, it's a lot slower. So uh, earlier this week in my live stream, I was going to do a live demonstration, but uh, we had some issues. So I just wanted to make this video real quick before I go out of town next week to let you know how to do it if you're trying to do this. Now, if you look at uh, the documentation, the main thing says to use the 8,000 kilohertz, 8-bit, use a raw extension with no header, do log compression, which was said right there. But the main thing here too that I actually had forgotten about was these sample rates. And because if the sample rate isn't just right and equally divisible by 240, that can give you some issues as well. So in this example, what we'll do is use Audacity since that's the free version. And I'm going to take the C2 ringtone that the viewer sent me, which was an MP3 format, and then we'll go ahead and convert it and test it out. So to begin with, <clears throat> first thing we're gonna do is we have the, the ringtone here. So if I play this file, That's how we actually want it to sound. And as you can tell, this is how it sounds on the actual phone uh, when I had set it up earlier. So uh, what we'll do here is go ahead and open the file. And you can see this is 44,000 hertz, 32 bit in stereo. So what we'll do here is we're gonna change our project right here to 8,000 and we are going to split this out to split stereo to mono and then we can just delete one of these and now we have our ringtone here and what you want to do too is if this is by default on seconds you want to change this to samples because we want to make sure those samples again are divisible by 240 so if we go ahead and highlight the whole audio file here we can see 72 uh, there's 72,934 samples now you can use a calculator and I'm sure there's many ways to do this, but a quick dirty way to do it would be as if you have Excel, for example. And what you could do is just put a couple values in here and then just drag this down so you have a whole bunch of numbers to work with. And then back up here, uh, we can use the sum and we're gonna say uh, the sum of the field times 240. And again, if we just drag this back down, now we have all these values populated. So in this case here, what I want to do is make sure that this number is equally divisible by 240. So if I go to 72,000, so if we scroll down, here we have our 72,000, that's 77. Here's 72,000. Um, 72,960, so the next one down is 72,720. So we could change this to 720, like that, and it just takes a little sliver off there. And then what we can do is say, export the selected audio and the type, and I'm gonna call this uh, just CTU, uh, but uh, have the other uncompressed files and choose options and then we're going to want to use this raw header and choose the EULA and we'll hit OK and then we can save this and for the metadata we can clear all of that and hit OK now we, you can see we have our CTU raw file. So now what we could do uh, <clears throat> as a template is we'll go to 
uh, our directory here and we'll download the current XML file and DAT file because that's another thing depending on what version your or of software and what model phone you could be using if you're using really old phones it could be using the ringlist.dat file if it's a newer one it's probably going to use the ringlist.xml file so what we can do is say um, go to tftp and then uh, 192 we'll use our publisher here 202 211 and we'll get the file ringlist.xml and ringlist.dat dat and then we can remove the read only attributes uh, from those files so we can edit them all right so now we have our two files here and I will go ahead and open this we'll say open with notepad and you can see for the dot dat files it's just the name with a comma and then the file name so I can just somewhere throw in here we'll say uh, 24 CTU and CTU.RAW. So we'll save that and then we'll do the same thing for the XML file. And probably 99% of the time nowadays, this is the main one you're going to want to use. And that's also referenced on the creation document, it has an example right here. Um, but as you can see, by downloading it, we already have our it's pretty much already filled out for you so just as an example I will uh, copy that and we'll say 24 CTU and we'll call this the CTU.raw and save that okay so now if we go to our call manager and we go to our OS administration and then over to TFTP file management and usually I get inconsistent results so you can do trial and error with here usually for me anything with the ring list I'm, I'm just gonna delete those um, technically you can upload and overwrite but I find some strange inconsistencies uh, because again the TFTP service is running in memory and the actual files that we upload to the disk aren't actually in memory until we restart the service and I've had some inconsistent results uh, if I don't delete them and that's why I have a just in case if it happens again because it did happen when I was trying to do the live stream before um, but I got the Wireshark so we can keep an eye on uh, what's going on um, but uh, so we have those deleted and then now we'll go ahead and upload these files so I'm gonna choose the CTU raw and you can leave this blank to leave it in the root directory or you could use a forward slash it doesn't really matter and we're gonna do this for the ringlist.dat and the ringlist.xml all right and now we can go back over to our serviceability And then under Tools and Feature Services, go to our CUCM, or a publisher, I should say, that's running our TFTP service. And we'll go down to TFTP and Restart, and press OK. Okay, you see the TFTP service restart was successful. And so now I'm gonna go back to the OS administra administration just to show you. If we go to the TFTP file management again and type in ring list. Uh, you can see we got the ring list dat and XML. Um, but you can see from the previous get, it was looking for this ring list XML dot sign and this apparently is generated when the phone first when once the phone or device reaches the TFTP server for the first time is my guess I don't know for sure but you can see that it's not there but then when we request the file it will be so right now I've got the the 7975 in front of me so if I go to the settings then the user preferences and rings 
You can see right now I have the default chirp. So I will select this. And now you can see our list of files in the 24 C2 that we created. So we can go down to highlight it and we can select or play it at this point and let's play it. So that sounds good. So now we'll go ahead and uh, hit save. And now you have your customized ringtone and as you can see here if I refresh this now uh, you can see that you have the sign file there and then that matches up with what the phone was getting here when it was requesting the the actual files the ring list the xml that sign so at any rate i hope this was informative for you and thanks for watching and i will see you guys in the next video